in the presence of the Lord. We are in the house of God today and it is a day to be rejoiced about. It is a day to be seeing that God is moving. I'm not alone, Christian. It's great Hi. to have you here. It's good to be here. It's Sunday morning. It's Sunday. And isn't it going to be a great Sunday morning? I'm really looking forward to this. I, I, I love the guest speaker. <laughs> I, yeah, no, the guest speaker is going to be amazing. We're having a, an incredible time with the guest speaker this, this Sunday, and it's going to be great fun. I know a lot of you are joining us on YouTube, Facebook, uh, Faith Now, and, and all our family around the world on linear television, which is Direct TV, Sky TV, DSTV, Go TV, as well as Terrestrial Analog and Direct to Home and DTT Television will be lot. joining us. All of those on Freeview in the UK as well. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are everywhere. We are around the world. That's a lot of places. That's a lot of places. How do you remember all those names? Does it take a long time to memorize them? Well, it's kind of like I work in television. Yeah, I was about to say, it is your job. <laughs> it's so it's my kind job. Of so I always kind of like remember them. And it's part of what I'm doing. You know, it's quite interesting because you've also been in Uncle Greg's classes. Yes. When it comes to dealing with kingdom principles and purpose. Mm -hmm. And are you expecting for the teaching of the word today on purpose? Honestly, it is one of the coolest experiences that I've had in the last two months to be privileged enough to sit in these meetings. So I'm so excited for you at home to be able to tap in, to learn, wow. to really just to experience the knowledge and wisdom that's about to be pulled out. It is, it's a supernatural event. And I think that I really don't know someone as talented in the gift of teaching come on that and i know god's going to use him mightily to touch you so pay attention you know you got to set aside distractions yep. you got to sit there you got to really really focus and every now and then your brain goes like ah what <laughs> so it's yeah no it's, yeah, gonna it's a lot it's going to be a lot of information so make sure you've got your writing pad you've got your bible oh, yeah. i don't take everything. notes normally like i really don't like taking notes yeah. and in this class i've literally i sit there and i'm just like constantly and you're like, scribbling yeah yeah <laughs> but that's why i've got my note i've sharpened my pencils go <laughs> We're always writing pencils. I prefer writing in pencils for some weird reason. So I've sharpened my <laughs> pencils. I've gotten everything ready because I'm going to be right here connecting. Oh, yeah. And I want to receive what God has for me because I know it's going to be a life-changing moment for each and every single mm -hmm. one of you. Each and every single one of you are connecting online, connecting wherever you're connecting from. Let's see who we've gotten on social media. So a lot of you have been on Facebook. You're joining us now uh, as well as YouTube connecting with us from around the world. I already see the Nigerian flags as well joining and jumping in. Let me just jump into <laughs> Facebook right now. And on Facebook, Book. We got a few people joining us. Welcome, uh, Judy. Welcome, Deborah. Uh, Kondwani, welcoming, joining us. Uh, Nigeria. Nigeria, Nigeria seems to always dominate. Here. Always. Whenever, like I go to YouTube, Nigeria. I go to Facebook, <laughs> Nigeria. I, I'm telling you, if DSTV had pop-ups where you could communicate, Nigeria. If you go where? to Nigeria, Nigeria. Nigeria. <laughs> be there. So where are the rest of the countries of the West? Where are the South Africans? Where are the Botswanans? Where are the Zambians, Zimbabweans, Kenyans, Somalians? Where are you in Egypt oh right God. now? All of those of you watching from Israel, from Australia, connect with us right now. Let us know where you guys are plugging in and connecting from because we're going to go into the service any moment, Christian. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be an amazing time because we're going to jump in time of praise because that's very important, oh yeah. how we praise the Lord. That's and how we it, enter in. Exactly. It's the best way to start your day. That's right. Completely grateful and excited and praising the Lord for what He's going to do in your life. And the more you praise Him in the very beginning of this, not that you buy things from the Lord, but it's putting yourself in a position of gratitude. Come on. And that's going to break something and help you understand and really increase Come on, preach it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> No, you want to jump on and jump in there, so it's going to be exciting. And then we're also dedicating babes from baby oh, yeah. dedication today. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be incredible because it's be very great. important. No, no, it's not baptism. No, no. It's dedication. Dedication. So these young people are going to be dedicated. We're not it's christening incredible. people here. Yeah. So it's going, to be, it's going to be a time right there with a baby dedication. Oh, yeah. We're going to be in the Word and we're going to get into worship and it's going to be an incredible time. It's a time. packed Sunday. It's, it's a, a packed very Sunday. packed Sunday. It's going to be a very packed Sunday. You know, what's your expectation for today specifically if you had one thing in 20 seconds, what would be your one expectation that you could throw at me? I'm talking longer to give you a few more seconds to think. <laughs> okay, I'm <laughs> ready. You I'm ready. You're ready. I'm cool. ready. Go for it. I think it's going to be time where people get completely committed to the kingdom of God. Come on. That's what I really think. It's going to be from the very get-go of the service, seeing people being dedicated to the Lord, then to have this awesome offering message tied all together with rediscovering the kingdom and our true principle. Come on. That's, That's powerful. So... 25 more seconds and we want to jump straight into the service. We want to welcome all our friends and family across the world on Direct TV, on Sky TV, on Freeview, on DSTV, on Go TV, every single other platform as well as Faith TV on Faith Now. Every single one of our friends and family who are going to be joining us. So jump straight in right now. This is Faith Church, Buffalo City, right here in the Great Faith Dome.
yes, I know joy is coming. Yes, joy is coming. Oh, come on, if you believe it, give him
to the screens. In a world where news is misleading, announcements are super boring. One man must rise to the chat. Two men must rise to the chat. Okay, there's a third now. And that couple? Uh, Bishop? And this guy is also here. Plus that lady. And he's leaving. Do we really have to count him? Okay, there are a lot of them. <clears throat> Together, they will team up to do the extremely daunting task of standing under these lights and repeating himself like... Good morning, faith family. Well, good morning, faith family. Good morning, faith family. This is Church News, bringing you new information every single Sunday. I have no idea how to transition this into the actual announcements, so... Um... Good morning, Faith family. This is Church News Season 1, Episode 6. I would like to take this moment to welcome you to our celebration service. If you are here for the very first time, I would like to welcome you on the behalf of our senior leaders, Pastor Nal and Pastor Taylor. If you do not yet have a Whoa, church... Whoa! Hold up, hold up. The lighting's terrible. <sighs> Gents, don't you think we should, like, shoot in a different location? Because every moment is actually funny. Right, Faith Church? I think so. I, I think every moment is funny. Yep. This is season one, episode six. Let's see. <laughs> we could go straight into the, um, the phone number. 
Oh, wait, are we shooting now? In the event you miss any of these following announcements, take this number down. 066-043-0450. That's our Faith Church Buffalo City WhatsApp number. Simply send us your name and surname and you'll be added to our WhatsApp broadcast list. We can get more information as to what's happening in the church. This coming Tuesday, Rock Solid Faith is taking place in Lecture Room 1 at 6 p.m. And this is a reminder that childcare is available. Was that too short? Okay, what do I say about rocks? Revival night, every Wednesday, right here at Faith Church Buffalo City. We'd love to invite you for our midweek service. It's always such an amazing time in the presence of God. Doors open at 5 and service starts at 6.30. Church, this is Keisha. This is Keisha. Say hi, Keisha. Say hi, Keisha. Hi. Okay, now please get this working. I hope my moral support is just helping. As the apostles went, the Lord accompanied them with signs and wonders. If you want to sign up for this mission trip, visit our mission tent right outside the dome entrance and sign up for the missions trip taking place from the 14th to the 19th of July. To every single person that completed DNA Step 1, this Sunday straight after church will be having DNA Step 2. If you would like to make a significant difference in people's lives and in local communities, join Faith Cares by by scanning the QR code, which will be on your screen in the next few moments. To see our city saved and our nation changed, join us for midday prayer, Tuesday to Friday from 12 to 1. It blesses us each and every single time that you share with us your testimony. If God has done anything in your life, please do let us know and share with us your testimony by sending us an email at testimony at ourfaithchurch.com. That is spelled T-E-S-T-I-M-O-N-Y. Just the little at the sign. O-U-R-F-A-I-T-H-C-H-U-R-C-H dot c-o-m looking for like-minded people join a small group today there's a number coming up right across your screen please take it down and send us your name your surname and the area in which you stay in um nxt friday new series as it is in heaven as it is in heaven it's kind of like a weird that's a lot name. that's a long look as it is in who does heaven. graphics word me <laughs> Good luck. Inspire, equip, expand, and that's the NXT. If you're between the ages of 14 to 30, we'd love to have you as we start our new series, As It Is In Heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, Kristen so is touching my butt. Home. No homo. Also no homo. 10 days, 100 hours in his glory. Ladies and gentlemen, join us for Revival X from the 21st to the 30th of June. This is Revival X. This is why we get encounters. This is when heaven comes upon us and he fills us with power. No, it's not about you. No, it's about a sound that you got to release to set generations free. Saturated, filled with glory, anointed, confident son of God that relies on His righteousness, that has called you by name and said, I need you to get the job done. Let it be known that by one name, the name above it all, by that name, and His name is Jesus. This is why we're here. This is why we do what we do. Yeah, these church announcements get, keep on getting weirder and weirder. You just never know. Christian could be recording right now. <laughs> well, it's great to have each and every single one of you in the house of the Lord today. And I've got Pastor Carl and Pastor Ronell from Faith Cares. We're going to just give us a brief report back as well about what took place out on this recent Faith Cares trip. So Pastor Ronell, you guys were out at Acorn Valley. Just tell us a bit more about where you guys were and just sort of the, the location in which you guys found yourselves in. Yes, good morning, church. Yes, we went to Acorn Valley and uh, we had our outreach there. I must say, Acorn Valley is a very destitute community. These people are struggling every day to get enough food for their families. They go to bed hungry and they wake up hungry. But we, despite of all these circumstances, we were welcomed with open arms and hearts and we were received with so much love. And as we began handing out the food parcels, what really struck me is that each and everyone, literally everyone, said thank you. But 
what struck me the most, Pastor Banda, was the fact that this one lady, after she received the food parcel, she lifted her arms and her head towards heaven, and she said, thank you, Jesus. And there I realized we are only vessels in God's hand. We are only the hands and feet of Jesus. But then there was another lady. She touched me with her glorious joy and she turned back after she received the parcel and she said, it is cold today. Well, Thursday when we went out, it was cold. And she said, it is cold today, but tonight I will enjoy a nice warm cup of tea with milk. Milk is something she doesn't drink every day, but she had the opportunity that evening to enjoy a nice warm cup of tea with milk. I must say, honestly, we had a huge success. Our outreach was a success. Why? It was not only about blessing people with food parcels, but there were also so many testimonies of miracles, healings, and salvations. The faith of people was strengthened, and Five Ks brought love and hope into a community that really needed it so much. Awesome. And from our side, I just want to say again to our faithful partners, thank you so much for what you're doing. You never realize what you are doing by supporting us. And um, I just want to extend um, uh, an invitation to you. Just follow the links that you will see and uh, be a supporter. Be there with us. And uh, you cannot maybe be in the person but you can be in the spirit. I just was also, also to share with you a few testimonies. And this was the incredible thing about why we reach out. You know, we normally say that the food parcel that we take is not only a food parcel. It's also a key to go into people's houses, to go into people's environments. And this, again, we experience. As we went, as we gave food parcels, we also said, we are going to share the word of God, of course. We did share the word of God. And there were 26 people that gave their lives to the Lord. So I just want to read rejoice with that not only that but what was incredible was the openness of people when we asked for people to come to the front so that we can pray for them that we can stand in faith with them that we can stand in faith in a way that um that that we can pray for certain things that they need in their lives people came to the front yes they were the normal things that we get people were asking us to pray for them regarding headaches regarding you know uh, back pain and so forth but what we saw this time what we saw really happening in front of us real creative miracles. We saw people actually, that uh, two ladies that I prayed for, immediately, as I flicked my fingers, they immediately, Come they on. could hear. That's and awesome. this is the most important part about it. You know, Pastor Carl, even as you're talking, so a lot of people, you can be a part of what Faith Cares is doing. There's been some details that have been coming on the cube as well as on the screen. You can scan that QR code. You know, Pastor Carl, I know you guys have more uh, events that you guys are planning. And what is next now for Faith Cares? Let me ask that question. Well, we always look around us and see what is the next big need. Mm-hmm. And, and we, um, you know, it's becoming winter, so winter project, that's probably the next one that we, the big uh, project that we will be running. And of course, with that, we give blankets. Yeah. But again, also with that, the Gospel of John and the Word of God, of course. Come on, that's powerful. Oh, that's powerful. Thank you so much, Pastor Carl, Pastor Ronald. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Faith Cares reaching out to people. You know, because what's the point of saying to someone, be blessed and then do nothing? And that's what we're all a part of. So I hope you guys are excited for church this morning. It's going to be an incredible time right here in the presence of the Lord. Who's ready to dedicate some babies today? Ah, you guys don't sound excited. Shame. So who's ready to dedicate some babies today? So we're going to have a baby dedication just now. And those 24 young, amazing kids are going to get dedicated to the Lord today. But I'm also curious, how many of them, those kids have driver's licenses? Parents, we need to sort this issue out, man. Why does this baby not have a driver's license yet? You know why they need a driver's license? Because coming June... You have to remember, if I enter, and then my wife enters, that's two. But if you, you've got all these babies, ah, five entries. So where's your baby's driver's license? 
So make sure your baby is registered for Faith Revival X. Make sure they've got their driver's license before Faith Revival X. We're going to be dedicating some babies today, but they need to make sure that they've got a driver's license. And if you're still wondering what we're talking about, we're giving away 10 cars during 10 days of 100 hours of His glory. One car each day. And if you, want, if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, I'll try it. We'll get it right this week. promise you. If you don't believe me, listen to Apostle Andre and Pastor Now. They'll tell you about it. Pastor Claire, we are car shopping today. Yes, it looks like it. We are car shopping. So, um, so what do you think? What do you think of our showroom here at uh, the Faith Dome? Are, are we ready for Re Revival X? <laughs> no, I think so. I uh, think if uh, this doesn't motivate somebody to come, I don't know what will. But, um, look at them. Now these are not the 10 that we're buying. These are just, uh, they brought out a couple because I wanted, I wanted everyone to see that uh, we're actually serious. And um, I mean, we've got different brands represented here. We've got the Nissan, we've got uh, the Renault. The Suzuki, Hi Hyundai. Yeah. Very nice. So the question is, I'm standing here with Pastor Clerk. The question is, are you coming to Revival X? I'm going to be there. You're going to be there. I'm going to be there. And I'm entering it. Are you entering it? I'm entering it. You're allowed? I uh, will hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Well, it's going to be a fair and open uh, you know, opportunity for everybody. We're not sure how we're going to do it yet. We're deciding all of that. I feel like whenever you see this, you haven't made plans yet to be a faith revival ex. Yeah. Today's the day to make the plans because God's going to move powerfully. And I really want to encourage you to plug into what the Lord is going to be doing. Come, you know, the middle of the year, we know that the, the power of God is going to be moving, the presence of God is going to be there. But I'm telling you something, many of you have been believing God for a vehicle. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be your opportunity. And uh, I really want to encourage you to make sure you register, be a part of it. I'm, I'm excited just standing here. I'm looking at, I'm imagining already what's going to happen. I mean, think about what took place, uh, you know, at Faith Revival 9.0. Yeah. Those giveaways, I mean, this is going to be a blessed time. Ten vehicles, come on. Ten days. <laughs> Revival. Yeah. Oh, see the oh, oh. 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 my goodness. Hello, good morning, family. Good morning, everybody. God bless you. How many of you coming to Faith Revival X? Can I hear you in this church? Amen. Have you registered yet? If you haven't yet, quickly, I want them to put the QR code on the screen right now, just for two or so minutes. I want to encourage you to make sure you've registered, even if this is your home church, still make sure that you register. You know, people have asked us, why are you giving away car, cars? Because God said so. We're going to be blessing people with a vehicle. So if you don't like it, just be quiet somewhere else. Amen. But some people are going to come to revival and not only receive a miracle, but someone's going to walk here and drive home. Amen. Or some of you that have had one car are going to leave with two cars. Amen. So if you don't like it, well, you just be quiet. Amen. So we're going to bless people and it's going to be a glorious time. So the QR code's on your screen. I would strongly encourage you to register. It's on your screen and you can be a part of it. But now quickly, we want to do something very special today. We've got 24 children that we are dedicating to the Lord. And so I want those parents with their children, please, we're not bringing up the whole extended family right now. Just send the mom and the dad, or if it's just a mom by herself, whoever, the guardian of the child, please, can you rise to your feet wherever you are? If you can just make your way here, you can make your way to the front here. They're going to help you to get into position. And uh, we're so excited to dedicate 24 children to Jesus. And uh, can we give the Lord some praise that there is fruitfulness in this house and those that are believing for a miracle child I see that coming in the name of Jesus amen so I want to ask those parents to make their way here quickly and uh, last time we called parents slipping they waited till the end and they, they missed out unfortunately so we do this in the beginning of the service so if you can make your way here parents if you can put your hands together for all the babies that are coming and uh, we're gonna dedicate them to the Lord 
Then we're going to receive the offering and then we're going to get into a time of worship. And uh, how many of you are excited for the word today? I'm telling you, we're going to receive a teaching that's going to change our lives. So quickly, parents, uh, if you can just look out towards the people, we're going to wait for a couple more pastors. If you can get ready, as well as some of our leaders, uh, um, if you can just get ready, Jason and Kirsty, as well as Keegan and Shylan. And uh, we want to just pray over these families and dedicate their children to the Lord. And we're very excited. I want to also greet the online family, those that are connecting all across on social media. We want to encourage you to please share the broadcast. Tag somebody in the comment section that's going to be with us today. So I'm going to come down on the floor, which is going to make the, the life a lot harder for the camera crew, but I'm going to do my best. But yeah, families, if you can stand together and just hold your kids. And don't worry if they start shouting. And whatever. I'm used to it. Amen. It's all right. We'll preach right through it. <laughs> but I want the pastors to spread themselves out, please. Don't just stand on one side. Let's get around them. You can stand behind them for now. And uh, we're going to be anointing and dedicating these children to the Lord. But I want to speak to the parents quickly. And I want every person in this room to hear this and all those that are on television as well. As we dedicate your children to the Lord. This is the responsibility of you as the parents, as you are now dedicating your children and you are saying today, Lord, we're, we're committing to raise our children up in the way that they should go. So I want you parents to play, pay close attention to the words that I'm going to be speaking because this isn't really for your children, this is for you to hear. Because today as the parents, you are committing to training up your children in the way that they should go. If you agree to that, can you say Amen. All right, I, I can hear multiple parents. I want the parents at the front here. If your child's crying, that's okay. But say amen as an, as an agreement. I will raise my children up in the way that they should go. Amen? amen? Amen. And so today, the Bible says in Psalm 127, verse 3 to 5, it says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Your children are not burdens. Your children are the greatest blessing that comes down as a reward from the Father. I want every one of you parents to hear today that are standing up here at the front. I want you to hear very clearly today that you are stewards over their destinies. That they are not burdens to you, but they are the blessings that you've been given to raise up as, as in the way that they should go. To prepare them and to equip them for their destinies that are at hand. Because as you hold your child here today, I want you to understand something very important. You hold a nation shaker in your hands. You hold a child, whether it be a girl or a boy, that is going to shake this world in Jesus' mighty name. That's going to do something mighty for the kingdom of heaven. And I have the privilege of dedicating my second daughter here today as well with you. Amen. Because we have a responsibility as parents in this final hour to raise our children up in godly homes. With godly values. Raising them up, understanding the word of God. That they would come to be people that know God. That walk in fellowship with God. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, it says this, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. The Lord knew your child before that child was formed in the mother's womb. The Lord knew your child. It is the Lord that has used you as the vessel to get the child onto the scene. You are just the vessel that has been used. Before that child was yours, that child is his. Amen. Before that child was yours, that child is his. The Bible says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. God speaking of the prophet Jeremiah, but we understand that God was saying this of Jeremiah, but likewise, he says it of your children today because he he's not a respecter of persons. So he knows your child. He formed your child in the mom's womb. And he said this, before you were born, I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Every child here is ordained to do something that God has set before them. Every one of them are ordained and have an assignment that is set before them. And you are the one that has to now steward that destiny. And so you have a great privilege. The last scripture I want to read, and then we're going to lay hands on them. Don't worry. And on the families. But the last scripture I want to read to you is found in Exodus chapter 2 and verse 3. In the New Living Translation, the Bible says, But when she, should, she could no longer hide him. Who is this speaking of? This is speaking of the mother of Moses. The Bible says, When she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus and, and reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds, among the bank of the river Nile. You see, with this story, many people don't know this individual's name. Her name was Jochebed, and it was the mother of Moses. This woman, because I want you to grab this picture as, you are, as we dedicate your children to the Lord today. This woman, in that time, they were killing all of the babies because why? A deliverer was going to be raised up that was going to lead the Israelites out. 
And the Bible tells us that this woman hid Moses for as long as she could possibly hide him. Until the point came that she had to what? She had to entrust him into the waters, into the river. Today, as you are entrusting your child, likewise you are doing what Jochebed did. This was an indication of her faith in God. Lord, you gave me this child. You gave me this child that will be raised up and will be a great deliverer. I'm entrusting this child to you. As she committed him to that basket and he went down the river and then was, was taken a few moments after that and, and was raised up in the household of the Egyptians and all the way that the story unfolds. Look at what God did through this man Moses. He became the deliverer of a nation to such an extent that God said, Moses, I'll make you as a God before Pharaoh and Moses will be your mouthpiece. He, the, in this home was raised up a mighty deliverer. Today, there are deliverers that have been raised up. There are children here that are going to do significant things that are going to shake not only our city, our nation, our continent, our world as we know it. Today, as we dedicate your children to the Lord, as you dedicate your child to the Lord, as we lay hands, as we anoint them with oil, it is the same way that Jochebed did as she entrusted her child to that basket. It was a prophetic thing of her entrusting her child Moses to the Lord. Today, that's the exact same thing that you're going to be doing. The oil is a sign of the Holy Spirit that your child is dedicated today, that your child belongs to the Lord. But now parents, you, you have the responsibility to raise them up. You have the responsibility to raise them up in the way that they should go. There's many ways they can go, but only one way they should go. And you have been given that responsibility as a mom, a dad, a granny, a guardian, whoever you are, to raise up the child that is in your hands today because you hold someone that the Lord is gonna use mightily. I could take you throughout the Bible, but for time's sake, I won't. How much Jesus loves the children. He said, you need to receive the kingdom like a child. So parents, I want you just wherever you are to hold your child if you can. If you can't, if, they, if they're toddlers and they're standing on the floor, that's okay. I want you to close your eyes and pastors, I want you to get oil on your hand quickly if you can, except for my wife. If you can quickly get oil on your hand. Have they moved through already? They're sorted. All right, parents, I want you with your other hand, I want you to lift your hands to Jesus. The rest of us, let's stretch our hands to them. Everybody in this church, let's stretch our hands to these children. And I want to pray a prayer. And as we do, we're going to begin to anoint your children with the oil. Because today, as we anoint them, they are dedicated on this Sunday to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord shall keep them. No fiery arrow shall take them out. The Lord shall cause them to prosper. The Lord shall cause it to be well with them wherever they go in the name of Jesus. They will not be confused with who they are, but they shall have even today an impartation of destiny, an impartation of purpose. They shall know the voice of the Lord from a young age in Jesus' mighty name. They shall not follow the voice of the stranger, but they shall follow the voice of the good shepherd and that voice shall they only follow. In the mighty name of Jesus, parents, as your, hands are, as your hands are lifted right now, pastors, I want you to begin to anoint the children right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We dedicate your children today to the Lord Jesus Christ. We dedicate every single one of them as we anoint their heads. We anoint the parents as well. Lord, we thank you that every one of these children are anointed. Every one of these children are your children. We dedicate them to you today. Their parents, we dedicate them to you today. We thank you, Father, that their health, their health will be well in Jesus' name. No sickness, no disease shall come upon them. We thank you even today for Michaela's two-year-old that was born two days ago. We thank you, Lord, that he is anointed in the name of Jesus. We thank you for strength upon her even today to raise him up in the way that he should go. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for them to be strengthened today. Every one of them, you can anoint her, thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for these families. We thank you for every one of these beautiful children and the many children that will follow. <laughs> Those that want lots of kids, amen. <laughs> we thank you for it, Father. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for wisdom for our parents, wisdom for every single one of them. Today we announce that they are dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you believe it, say amen and amen. Now. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for all these babies. <laughs> now, parents, I want to quickly announce to you, at the end of service today, we have something special prepared for you. We have a gift for your child. 
a gift for you as a family as well. And some, we want to spend some time with every one of you after the service. So when you're done with service, if you can make your way, please, to the lecture room number one. We'll have people there to receive you. We have pictures ready for you to take pictures with families and just have a special time with you. And we have a gift from the ministry for every single one of you. Amen. So would you join us there after service? And we love you. You may grab your seats. Can we put our hands together for every single one of them? In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Are you ready to get into the Word of God this morning? I wanted to do that up front because to me, it is so important. Our children are a heritage from the Lord. Our children in this, fam in this church, we're a family church. Yes, we might be on global television, but it's important for us to dedicate our families, even on live TV across the whole world. Families to us are vital. We love families, strong families. We pray into it. We believe in them. And so we're so grateful for every single child that's been dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we give the Lord one more big praise in this place? I know you're ready for the word today. So I'm, my job is to be quick and to get out of the way because we've got a mighty man that's going to come and teach today. And I hope that you've brought notes. And uh, I have the privilege to call him my father. And uh, he's also one of my mentors. And I know he's going to bless you today. And I know that we're going to be empowered by the word of God. So I want you to open up your Bibles quickly as I receive the morning offering. And I want you to get your envelopes ready. The ushers are moving around. And uh, I want to thank you for your patience as well. We're trying something new with not opening the dome until 10 minutes before the service. And uh, the reason why we do that, some people get upset because we don't let them sit where they want to sit. Let me tell you something. When this church gets to the point of 5,000 people, you can sit on any chair you want to sit. You can sit on the stage if you want to sit on the stage. Amen. But at the moment, we have to fill the floor first. And so we just ask for your patience and our ushers are very loving and we want to seat you in a specific place because we have to fill the floors first. Amen. We have an 11,000 seater auditorium to fill. Amen. And the Lord has done something mighty in this church. Amen. There is unusual growth taking place because a church that grows is a church that must be on the go. So if we stay on the go for Jesus, our church will continue to grow. Amen. Our city is being saved and our nation's being changed. Aim to the man. All right. I don't want to take you to Psalm. I want to take you to Jeremiah 17, actually. Jeremiah chapter 17. And I want to read today from verse 7 as we receive the offering. Ushers are moving around with envelopes if you'd like to be a part of it today. If this is your first time, a very warm welcome to Faith Church. God bless you. We want to welcome you home ahead of time. There's no need to look any further. Welcome to your home in Jesus' name. Amen. So if it is your first time, we want to give you a warm welcome. God bless you. And thank you so much for joining us for our celebration service today. Jeremiah 17, I'm going to read today from verse 7 as to what the scripture would show us. Actually, let's move up. Let's read from verse 5. Amen? Let's read from verse 5. Jeremiah, the 17th chapter and the 5th verse, it says this. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man. Are you listening to these words? Cursed is the man who trusts in man. And what does this man do? And makes flesh his strength. These are very strong words that we're reading now, but listen to this. And makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. Isn't it interesting that the moment that you put your faith in man instead of the son of man, the Bible says your heart has departed from the Lord. Are you listening? Look how strong the scripture is. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man. Speaking of natural men. And the Bible says, and makes flesh his strength. The Bible says, whose heart departs from the Lord. See, every one of us needs to hear this today as we're going to give in the offering. We are not looking to flesh for our help. Blessing doesn't come from man. Blessing comes through man. Promotion doesn't come from man. Promotion comes through man. Favor doesn't come from man. Favor comes through man. There is one whose hand all blessing flows. The Bible says, from the Father of lights, every good and perfect gift comes from. You see, today, every one of you needs to understand that we're not looking to a government for our aid. We're not looking to a political party as our source. 
Who is in this natural office doesn't matter to us. We pray for them. We are to vote. I'm not saying don't vote, but understand something. Our trust is in the one that is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the king of all kings. He is the Lord of all lords. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the one that was there at the beginning. He's the one that has been there at the end. Come on, is there anybody who knows him? I came to encourage you. He's the one that is called faithful and true. He's faithfulness is to 1,000 generations. He's from everlasting to everlasting. He is the helper of our destiny. He is the one that formed us in our mother's wombs. Come on, do you know Him? I came to encourage you. He is the King of kings. He is the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. There is nobody that is like Him. Nobody that can stand against Him. He doesn't have a rival. He doesn't have an equal. Nobody can stand in His way when He blows his breath from heaven he makes highways where there's no ways come on where there's a red sea his ways were in the red sea and the red sea saw him and turned back the Jordan saw him and fled the scripture says oh I came to encourage you that's your king that's your Lord that's your God I said he's a mighty God he's a mighty deliverer he's a mighty provider he's a mighty healer that's your God That's the one today, that's the kingdom that we're a part of. See, blessed is the man, because now we see curse. Now let's read the scripture from verse six. What does it say? Because there's a category here. It says, cursed is this type of man who trusts in the arm of flesh, who makes flesh his help, flesh his source. But the Bible says now, it describes this man. It says this, the man that trusts in man will be like what? Will be like a shrub in the desert. He shall not see when good comes. There are people that even in, in when good is coming, they're still missing it. Why? Because of who they're connected to. Because they're looking at the wrong source. The Bible says he'll not see it when good comes. That means good comes, but he doesn't recognize it. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. Next verse. But blessed, hallelujah. I don't know, but I know I'm speaking to those people today. Because now we see a different category of people. The scripture says, but blessed. Someone say blessed. Blessed Blessed is the man. And what does this man do? He trusts in Yahweh. Someone say, I trust in Yahweh. The I am that I am. The all sufficient God. That is his covenant name from generation to generation. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. And whose hope is the Lord. Next verse. The scripture says, it describes these people now. Are you listening? It says, these type of people who trust in the Lord, what will they be like? The Bible says, they will be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river. Someone say, I'm in the river. Now listen to this. The Bible says, and will not fear when heat comes. Heat will come. Conditions and situations and circumstances will come. But this man who is planted, who trusts in the Lord, who is planted like trees by the riverbank, even when difficulty comes, he will not be worried. The Bible says, and he will not fear when heat comes. But its leaf will be green. What does that speak of? Vitality. What does that speak of? Flourishing. What does that speak of? Thriving. The verse goes on to say this but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought. This is what I like ending this off with as we receive today's offering. Nor will he cease from what? Producing, yielding fruit. That means in every season, I'm fruitful. In every condition, I'm producing. In every type of situation or circumstance, whether it's hot or cold, I'm producing. There is something that is flowing from my life. Why? Everything, that result that the Bible is speaking of is all the result of the man who is blessed, who trusts in the Lord. Today, where is your faith? Where is your trust? When it comes to the area of your finances, where is your trust? Are you trusting more in what your account indicates? Are you trusting in more of what the economy is dictating? Today, every one of us has been blessed by God. And we're all at a different measure of blessing today. I'll never, I've told you, we'll protect this altar. We'll never have people come up and tell you, you have to give this much money. No. 
In the New Testament, we give from the freedom of our heart, from cheerful hearts. As we've been blessed, we give. Today, every one of you is at a different position financially. And I want you to prepare your offering to bring to the Lord, whether it's your tithe or your offering or your seed. I want you to prepare it and have it ready to bring today. But every one of you is at a different level. Here's the key. You decide whether you stay at that level. You decide if you want to stay functioning at that level. The Holy Spirit is speaking to every person here in this church and every person watching online to give a particular gift today. Your job is to obey that leading. Not the, man of a, not, the, not the voice of a man, but the voice of the Holy Spirit. As He speaks unto our hearts, like He speaks to me and Pastor Taylor and every pastor, every leader, this is the, the seed I want you to bring today. Yes, Lord, I bring it to you. Amen. Are you ready to give today? As we give, I want you to understand something. Don't cut God's covenant in half. Everybody tells you all the time, you know, I give not to receive anything. My friend, that's false humility because the Bible says, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, but he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. There's nothing wrong with you today sowing your seed and believing for a return of a harvest. There's a twofold advancement attached to your seed. Number one, the kingdom of heaven is advanced, that we might go forth and do what God has commissioned us to do as a ministry, part of the kingdom of God. But not only is the kingdom advanced, but you personally shall be advanced. Can you say amen? That as you partner with God, you partner in His kingdom, you will advance supernaturally in the name of Jesus. So if you believe it and if you've got your seed ready, if you need an offering envelope, I want you to put your hand up quickly. They're going to get it to you. For those of you that maybe this is your first time in this church, please, you're not under any compulsion to give. We give out of a place of cheerfulness and revelation of understanding the Word of God. People have told us we manipulate and we say, no, you are, it's completely up to you if you want to partner with the kingdom of heaven. And we teach the blessing of that which the Bible makes available to us. Amen. Are you ready to worship the King today? If you are and you have your offering, I want you to stand to your feet as I'm going to pray. Husbands and wives, gather together. Vocals, you can come onto the stage. Those at home, the details are on your screen. We're going to worship the Lord. And then we're going to receive a teaching that's going to empower us to a whole new level. Someone say vision. No, someone say vision. Someone say purpose. I'm telling you today, we're going to be ignited with fresh vision. Purpose is going to be unveiled on the inside of us today. Amen. Let's stand to our feet today. Every person standing, even if you're not giving, you can still stand and partake of this in the name of Jesus. Every one of us standing. Let's hold our seed to the Lord right where you are. If you want to give with the machines, the machines are in the aisles. That's completely up to you. Details are on the screen for those in the venue that want to scan that as well. And those online, you can follow the details. Amen. Are you ready? Let's hold our seed. Father, we praise you today and we thank you for the blessing that we have to give into your kingdom. We thank you that your word says that every seed that is sown shall be multiplied. We thank you for multiplication. We thank you, Lord, that you, you promised us that those who sow sparingly, there's a, a reciprocity of that they would reap sparingly, but those who sow bountifully, they shall reap bountifully. As we sow today, Lord, we thank you to be a part of your kingdom is a blessing. We thank you that this seed shall be multiplied in the name of Jesus, pressed down, shaken together, running over. We thank you that it shall be given back into our bosom. Lord, as we bring our offering today, let it be a sign of our love and our sacrifice for your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you and we give you praise in the name of Jesus. And God's people say, amen and amen. I want to invite you right now. Let's bring our offerings to the Lord and let's worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords in Jesus' name. Amen.
above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. For thou only art high above. Lift your voices to Jesus.
set our affection on you we thank you that you're in this place where you are worshipped you come and reside so we welcome you sweet spirit of the Lord thank you that you are moving in this place as your word is taught under the anointing thank you that you will perform it in Jesus name our hearts are open to receive our eyes are looking to you our ears are inclined to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So we worship you this morning. And we love you with all of our hearts. We love you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody in this building says aloud, amen. Amen and amen. I want you to stay standing where you are. Vocals, thank you so much. You can grab your seat. I want you quickly just smile at the person next to you before you take your seat. Because I want us to do something important. And uh, I have the great privilege today to welcome to the altar a, a great teacher of the Word. And I know that today we're going to be empowered. Those that are watching online, make sure you get into social media. Uh, make sure you get into the comment section as well. But if you could please put your hands together and welcome my father, Greg Kler, as he comes to minister the Word today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Let's honor him today. God bless you, Dad. Good morning, church. How are you? Be abundantly blessed in Jesus' name. Please be seated, everybody. It's my privilege to share the word of the Lord on this altar today. And I trust that you have taken the advice and brought your notebooks with you. Please get them out because you're going to be making notes today. And we're going to have a good to get time together as we discover what the, what the Word of the Lord has to say about personal purpose. If you would please come with me to the book of Jeremiah and the first book and from chapter 5. We're going to read from chapter 5 and I beg your pardon, from verse 5 until verse 8. Chapter 1 from verse 5 until verse 8. If you have it. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. And then I said, this is Jeremiah in response, says, Ah, Lord, behold, God, I, I do not know how to speak, for I'm only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I'm only a youth, for to you, for, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. I'm here to announce to you today that the Lord had a purpose for you before you were born. In fact, that's not accurate enough. The Lord had a purpose for every one of you before you were in your mother's womb. In fact, that's not accurate enough. The Lord had a purpose for you when you were not in a tangible form. Can you think that heavy? Because if you can understand that, then he finished you before he began. Amen, church. He finished you before he even began. And if we read what he has to say here to Jeremiah, he says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. So in the specific case of Jeremiah, the Lord gives him a specific purpose for his life. Not just a general plan. Not just you going to live on planet earth. You are going to celebrate me. Not just that. 
He gave him a very specific plan for his life. So I'm here to announce to every one of you that when you were still in an intangible form, when nobody could see you, God had a very specific plan for you that is different to the person sitting next to you. Never ever cancel a human being. The, you have no idea who's sitting next to you. You have no idea what is in them. And when Jeremiah responds and he says, but I'm just a youth, because I understand he was very young at that time, the Lord basically says to him, that is irrelevant. I know that we have a lot of our children in faith kids this morning, but for those of you who are young and sitting in this auditorium under the sound of my voice, understand you are included in the promise. God has a specific plan for you. We're going to talk about a general purpose, but today is about the revelation of a specific purpose. And I want you to, if you're listening to me under the sound of my voice and for our partners on television, hear this. There is a plan for you and today is a day of revelation. Amen. All right, let's listen up as we get into it. There's another part of Jeremiah I want to go quickly to, and that's chapter 29. I'm going to read it. You don't need to go there. And it says, um, it says there from verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. That is the promise of God for every one of us today. Now, it is impossible to biblically teach on purpose for our lives if we don't establish two overarching principles from the word. And I would ask you to listen very carefully because if you get these two, it will change the way you live for the rest of your days. Today will be the last day that you walked in living like you did. The first principle that we need to deal with is in everything that we are to do, bring honor first to Jesus. Let me explain that. Our overarching purpose on this earth, not our specific purpose, but our overarching purpose in everything that we do is to bring honor to the Lord. In Genesis chapter 1 from verse 27 and 28, Claudia, if you could put it up, I'm going to read it very quickly says, so God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him. And God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, using all of its vast resources in the service of God and man. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves upon the earth. Now, what God is describing here is an overarching purpose. And he's saying, I gave you birth to have dominion on planet earth. And in having dominion, you will bring glory to my name. I created you to do that. Now, there's no ways the God of heaven is going to place us on earth and give us an instruction without empowering us for that. Amen? That would be abuse of his creation. So just by reading that and acknowledging that just scripture this morning, you have just acknowledged that you are empowered to be able to do what God instructs you to do. Amen? None of us are exempt from that. In fact, because of Jesus, we are totally empowered. And I'm going to take you to the book of Ephesians. I'm going to read it. There's no reason for you to go there. It says from verse 12, and it's from chapter 1 so that we who first hoped in Christ and who first put our confidence in him have been destined and appointed to live for the praise of his glory. Well, that's interesting information. But with respect, I need a bit more. Amen? I need something specific for my life. Now, what Jesus does in the sixth chapter of Matthew, and if you spend enough time in that chapter, it is a radical portion of Scripture. But Jesus in that chapter gives us the secret to the empowerment that we need. And I'm going to take you to chapter 6 in Matthew and the 33rd verse. If you could put that up, please, Claudia. It says, but seek 
aim at and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, and then all these things taken together will be given to you besides. In other words, if we focus our life on the kingdom of God, and he is the king, Jesus is the king, and his righteousness then all these things will be added to you. What are all these things he's talking about? He's talking about things like food, clothing, shelter, protection, security, your life. These are things we vote governments in for. These are things economies work, work on. These are things we go to a job every day to provide for our families, or you should. And Jesus said, these things are things that you need to do. They're important, but he said, if you want to be able to do them well, the way you need to do it is by seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen? And then all these things will be added to you. Which means, ladies and gentlemen, he's just given you a covenant promise. If you will dedicate everything that you do in your life, if we do this, if we dedicate everything we do in our life to seeking first Him and His righteousness, then He will, in terms of that covenant, covenant, empower us to prosper. We're not only talking about financial prosperity, we're talking about the prosperity of your individual purpose and plan that He has for your life. And this is what He promised Jeremiah all the way back in the first chapter of Jeremiah. So Jesus gives us a covenant, which is an amazing promise. The way we live on this planet, folks, is to operate by covenant. The word contains promises or keys. When we do our part, they become covenant and God is compelled to respond. It's an amazing promise. So we must focus first on the interests of kingdom and not our own. You know, in the 22nd chapter of Matthew, Jesus says the greatest commandment in, from about verse 37, he says the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. That's your life. And if you do that, I beg your pardon, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. How do you love the Lord your God with all your might, all your heart, and all your soul? I've asked myself that question many times. How do we do that? What is the practical way that you do that? You know, it's easy to come into church and to praise the Lord and worship, and my goodness, that was worship. But what happens tomorrow? What happens tomorrow? Because we get up on Monday and we've got to face Monday. The way you love the Lord with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul is to pour yourself into him which means you must pour your life into him which means I need to pour my purpose into him when I pour my purpose into him amazing things begin to happen the second very important key that we need to understand and it is an overarching principle you cannot credibly teach biblical purpose outside of these two principles the first one is to focus on the Lord and give him glory for everything that you do the second thing is the principle of empowerment the principle of empowerment if you're writing it down what happened when you got saved now there may be some folk under the sound of my voice an opportunity will be given later in this in this this um, time together where you can give your life to the Lord. But for those of us who have given us our, our lives to the Lord, what happened at that particular point? We got saved because we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But a very significant thing happened spiritually. Your spirit was immediately regenerated. Because the Bible says when we get saved, he pours his Holy Spirit into you. Am I right? Do you realize what you're sitting on? Do you realize that that is the same spirit that was in Jesus when he was in the earth? Well, what is our problem? If we have the same spirit that Jesus had when he was in the earth, why do we struggle? The reason we struggle is because we have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body. And the piggy in the middle is our soul. 
can you accept that God, His Spirit, His Word are in perfect unity, yes? Which means if He places His Spirit in you, your spirit is actually in perfect unity with His. The devil can't attack your spirit. Folk, the devil can only attack your mind. That is why we need to bring our mind into unity with our spirit. And that's why Paul in Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 to 2 speaks so much about renewing your mind. And how do you renew your mind? By the word of God. Not by social custom, not by the opinions of others, not by what the world tells you. Tells you. you renew your mind by the word of God and the word of God only. In fact, the mirror that you look into every day is the word of God. Now, when we are able to do that, when we renew our minds, something really special happens. You see, it's our mind that prevents us from doing the things that the Lord tells us to do. It's our mind that interferes with the willingness of our spirits. The word says that in in Matthew chapter 6, that the spirit is indeed willing but the flesh is weak. These are two very, very important principles to understand. You have been empowered because God poured his spirit into you. I think sometimes we don't adequately realize what we're sitting on. Who is in us? It is Christ in you. Let me explain this one a little bit further. The assignment of Jesus was to enable us to live a life of abundance. I'm not talking about financially, that happens. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about abundance of your specific purpose. Why is it, folk, that we spend so much time praying to get things from God when we should be praying much more to release what He's already given us? Listen to that. We spend so much time praying to get stuff from God. Look at your own prayer list. It makes me audit my own prayer list. What am I praying for and how am I praying? I'm, are you praying for the rent? Are you praying to be able to afford the salaries in your business this month? Those are needs. Jesus said those are needs. He didn't ignore them. But he said, seek first the kingdom and these things will be added to you. I'm saying to you and I'm here to announce to you under the spirit of God that you have the ability to declare and it will happen if your focus is on Jesus first. Amen. Well, that applies equally to your purpose. Because if Jesus, if if God talks about to, to Jeremiah and says to him that basically I finished you before you were born and I gave you a purpose, that means your purpose isn't ahead of you. Your purpose is in you. Don't look somewhere else for your purpose. You must look in you. Because the Spirit of God is in you. Where is in you? The Word of God. That is what we need to look at. So those are the two principles which are very important, folk, for us to understand. The first one is to focus first on the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, to focus on Jesus. And then the next one is to understand that you are perfectly empowered. Now, there might be some stuff you've got to do, but in the Spirit, you are perfectly empowered. It's quite important. So where does this all go wrong? Where does this all go wrong? I have discovered in my life that despite being a Christian, despite being having the Spirit of God, despite being in the process of renewing my mind, it's possible to live an aimless life. I'm just being honest. I'm just talking about myself. How many of us came to church today hating what you do and trying to fit Jesus into that and make sense of it. Please don't put up your hands. But I'm just being honest because I understand that. I understand that. And we battle to make sense of it. Let me take you on a little bit of a journey and this might be a bit of a surprise for you. Do you know, I found the schoolyard to be possibly the cruelest place on planet Earth. Anybody identify with that? I mean, I did great at school, but stuff happens in the schoolyard. What happens? You arrive at school, and the first thing that you try to do is to fit into a crowd. Now, if you're good at sport, you're going to fit in with a sporting crowd. 
If you've got a bit of money, well, then you can buy some friends. If you're good looking, hey, there's a crowd for you. I I didn't fit into that one. What is the problem with that? It teaches a very destructive mentality because it means that you spend your life hiding in a crowd. How many of us are hiding in a crowd? And you know, the brutal truth is that as we move into adult life, the game just gets more sophisticated, but the subject remains the same. Amen? We find there are three questions that happen when we meet somebody. We say, What is your name? Where do you live? And what do you do? Am I right? Those are probably the three most meaningless questions I've ever heard. <laughs> Asking you what your name is is, an, is a form of identification. We identify who you are, that's your name. Asking you where you live is a little bit more of an interrogation, but really what I'm trying to find out is, do you fit into my tribe? And then I'll ask the third one, what do you do? Now that's really a dividing line. Because if I'm a lawyer and you're a street sweeper, you don't fit into my tribe. How dare I cancel a human being? Reflect on that for a moment. They provide information, but it's not very useful. None of those things address who you are. So my question, folk, is who are you? Because the question I should really be asking is, what are you carrying? When I ask students, because I I have the privilege of teaching them in the Bible school, and when I ask students, who are you? They can tell me that their name, they can tell me where they came from, and they can tell me I'm going to be a pastor. I didn't ask you what you're going to do. I asked you, who are you? Am I right, Wendy? You remember. I asked you, who are you? And then the look becomes very blank, and my heart breaks, but I understand why. Because nobody has taught us to ask that question of ourselves. And the schoolyard messed us up. Because we were content to hide in the crowd. Folk, at what point are you going to stand away from the crowd and let people see who you really are? It's an issue of vulnerability. And I put it to you that if you do not know who you are in Christ, you will never be able to stand away from the crowd and say, this is who I am. So the question is, what are you carrying? Reflect on that for a moment. What am I carrying? Amen. I hope you're being challenged. One of the other experiences I've had in my life is where, uh, in this particular ministry, I happen to occupy a number of, I wear so many hats I've lost count. So I'm the CFO of the ministry, I lecture in the Bible school, and I play in that awesome band. And people come to me and they say, just hang on, what did you say you did again? And then I try and explain to them, and for me it's very difficult because of all of those things, and they say, but how can you be an accountant and a musician? Well, the truth is I regard myself actually as a musician who is also an accountant. (laughs) What am I saying? (laughs) Yes, I will make, I will be the butt of the joke because it'll teach the principle. What am I saying? People will put you in a box that they make for you And do you know why? Because they can understand you as long as you sit in that box. The minute you try and get out of that box, they will ask you questions like, who do you think you are? Have you ever heard that before? Worse still, people who really don't have your interests at heart will want you to stay in that box because they can control you there. This is a very, very dangerous way to live your life. Especially when you have a revelation that God 
had a plan for you, specific plan for you, before you were even in your mother's womb. You know that. You've had the revelation of that. They don't. How dare they try and put you in a box? But you have to have the courage to get out the box. You have to have the courage to step away from the crowd. It doesn't matter how spiritual you are. Please forgive me. I need to be direct. It doesn't matter how spiritual you are, but at some point, you have to be able to stand away from the crowd and say, this is who I am. If church is about discipling, then we come to church to learn how to live. It is my function today to speak pretty directly to certain things. Do you know, one of the other obstacles I've heard is that, is that, and experienced in fact, is that people don't understand how to reconcile their aspiration to be significant with their relationship with Christ because they think humility means basically hiding in the crowd. They equate humility sometimes with poverty. They equate humility with just being part of the crowd that worships God and, and you're happy with that. When there's a cry in your heart for significance, has anybody ever spoken to you like this? The first time somebody spoke to me like this, it rocked my world and I realized I would forever be changed. Because I realized there were some questions I've got to ask because in my heart and in my spirit, there was this yearning for significance. It helps me a lot when I have a look at in Mark chapter 9 and from verse 34 where the disciples are walking along the road and they're whispering between themselves. And basically what they're discussing is who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus realizes what they're talking about and he challenges them. And then he says to him, to them, the one who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven is the one who's going to serve. So Jesus didn't discourage greatness. He encouraged greatness. Our version of humility is the world's version, not God's version. True humility is submission to him. Jesus said, I only do what my father tells me to do. And he did everything that his father told him to do. He manifested the kingdom. Signs and wonders happened simply because he was hearing the father. How could Jesus change the world in three years without being significant? I ask my question, myself the question, if Jesus changed the world in three years, how long do I need? How long do you need? Who are you? What is it that you're carrying? I want to say to you that the world is crying for what you have. The world is desperate for what is in you. You need to identify it. How long are you going to make the world wait? It's quiet in this auditorium today. We need to reflect on these things. The promise is that God has an awesome plan for you. I want to say to you that you were designed for success. You were designed perfectly to have influence and impact on planet Earth. I also want to say to you that God takes your dreams more seriously than you do. Why is it that we encourage our children to dream and then make a decision that we're not allowed to dream as adults? When the Bible says that God gives visions and he gives dreams, what dream is in your heart? What dream is in your heart? People are desperate for what you're carrying. And I want to ask you a couple of questions. You see, because you were born for a reason. I'm speaking about the revelation of purpose, personal purpose. And I'm, I want to consolidate the fact that you cannot leave this facility today. And if you're listening on air, you cannot turn off your television set without asking yourself the question, why was I actually born? There are no mistakes. God does not make mistakes. Because he had a plan for Jeremiah before he was in his mother's womb, which tells me there's no such thing as an unplanned pregnancy. Think about it. 
you here now, the world must deal with you because God puts something in you that everybody needs. You are unique. The person sitting next to you does not what have what you have. My question is, what is it that you're carrying? What is it that you're carrying? Here's a few questions, just to make it very practical. How will your community be different because you lived? How will your community be different because you lived? Or when you die, what are they going to say at your funeral? He was a nice guy. He was very busy. Doing what? Here's a mental picture. I always tell this to my students. Imagine a marble floor. Imagine a cat on the marble floor. Imagine the cat trying to bury something on the marble floor. Is that what our life is? Busy, but ineffective? How is your community going to be affected by your life and what you are doing? How will your generation be be better because you answered the call of God on your life? Are you brave enough to stand away from the crowd and reveal who you really are? Now, it may be that where you are right now, This word is challenging you. It may be that you're wondering why you're working where you're working. Please don't go and resign tomorrow. (laughs) Let me emphasize that. Please don't go and resign tomorrow and wonder why you're hungry at five o'clock. Because everything in life is preparation for the next thing. And biblically, here's the basis for that statement. Joseph, when he was a young man, had a dream. He had attitude, but he had a dream. Brothers didn't like it because it challenged them. He was not in the box they made for him. So what did they do? They effectively got him put into a pit. When Joseph was sitting in that pit, I'm sure he looked at it and said, this is not what I saw, but it's just temporary. When Joseph got into prison, after that debacle in Potiphar's house where he was framed, I'm sure he said, this is not what I saw either, but it was only temporary. But I want to say to you that when he began to focus exclusively on the interests of the kingdom, God released him into destiny. Don't resign from your job tomorrow. It's preparation for what you need to do. You might even need to be there forever. But that doesn't mean that you can't do your purpose. You see, your purpose is your true work. Your job is just a job. Pastor Niall is a pastor. That's his job. It's his function. That's not who he is. That is one of the ways that he addresses who he is. What he's carrying is not just being a pastor. He's carrying something much bigger than that. But being a pastor is just one of the ways that he delivers himself to the world. I got great inspiration from the late Dr. Miles Monroe because I saw a man, I saw a man who had a call of God on his life. He understood God's specific purpose for his life and he addressed it by being a pastor, by being an author, by being a leadership teacher, by being a mentor, by being a mentor to presidents and kings. He had presidents on his speed dial. You couldn't classify him as a pastor. That was one of his functions. Does that make some sense? Hopefully that paints the picture. So God trapped your future inside of you. And we need to understand that that there's a way that we can recognize what our purpose is, the specific purpose for your life. And I really want to get quite specific now. Your purpose is going to give you complete fulfillment and peace. Write that down. When you find what it is, who am I? When you take the courage to act on who you are, it will give you complete fulfillment and peace. It will also require your uniqueness. You're able to do things that the person next to you can't do. Let me give you the example of Moses. It's one I use all the time. 
when Moses was called for a specific purpose, and that was to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and into the promised land. One of his biggest complaints or defenses, he tried to get out of this, and he said to the Lord, I can't speak. I'm paraphrasing. You read it in Exodus 3 and 4. And he said, I can't speak. And the Lord responded by saying, bring Aaron, he will speak for you. The thing that you think is a handicap is somebody else's job opportunity. There are no excuses, folk. When God calls you to a future, he calls you to a future. Your job is to step out of the crowd and deliver yourself under his will. Amen. Once you see your purpose for your life, your specific purpose and plan God has for you, when you see it, it will take over your life. You won't be able to help. In fact, you're going to become uncontrollable. And people will say, who do you think you are? When people say, who do you think you are? Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate him. You're about to step into big things. A passion rises up in you and you activate it. Just look at Paul. Just look at Peter. What happened to them? But it's with wisdom, folk, that you pursue your purpose. Prayer alone is not going to help you. Now, let me explain that statement. I remember sitting and having dinner with Dr. Miles Monroe some years ago and Pastor Ron. And there was a whole lot of pastors around the table and he made this statement. It was a radical statement. He's written volumes on prayer. And he said, he put his knife and fork down, he folded his arms, he sat back in his chair and he said, you know, prayer doesn't work. And you could feel the oxygen get sucked out of the, out of the room. <laughs> Here is he. And then he said, when there was pause for sufficient effect, he said, unless you do something with what the Holy Spirit says to you. Your prayer will always work, but you have to do something with it. Your purpose for your life is not going to happen by accident. It's going to take vision and it's going to take planning. I don't have enough time today to talk about vision and planning. And by the way, if you are watching uh, by television, our, our, our television family, I'm afraid to say that we're going to be going on after the next few minutes. So please cross over to social media so that we can see you on the other side of that. You see, purpose provides direction. Vision gives you something a lot more specific. But purpose provides direction, which is the direction in which you must move with your life. So if we look at Proverbs 24, and Claudia, if you could put this, this up, please. Proverbs 24 and verse 3. It says, through skillful and godly wisdom, a house, and in brackets, this is from the Amplified Classic, a life, a home, a family is built, and by understanding it is established on a sound and good foundation. So the steps you take into your future are not casual. They are not haphazard. They are structured. If we look at Proverbs chapter 16, and verse 9, it says, A man's mind plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps and makes them sure. So, teaching and preaching is no good unless you give example. How do you hear, how do you understand what God's plan is for your life, his purpose for your life, his specific purpose? How do you do that? Number one, write it down. Hear his voice. Hear his voice. I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 11, and we're going to read from verse 8 to 10. This is a very crucial scripture. Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 8 to 10. It says, urged on by faith, Urged on by faith. Abraham, when he was called, so God called him. It still applies today. God's calling you. And you're going to need faith. He obeyed. 
and he went to a place which he was destined to receive as an inheritance and he went, although he didn't know or trouble his mind about where he was to go. So there were still some things that weren't specific, but God had given him direction. And that was enough to ignite his faith engine. Prompted by faith, he dwelt as a temporary resident in the land which was designated in the promise of God, though he was like a stranger in a strange country, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs with him of the same province, promise. For he was waiting patiently and confidently, looking forward to the city which has fixed and firm foundations. Now watch it. Whose architect and builder is God. What does architect mean? What does an architect do? He draws up a blueprint. He draws up a plan. He designs something. But to design something, the architect must have seen the end from the beginning. There's no ways you can design something haphazardly. I know I used to do art at school and I used to draw like that, but that's not very productive because actually you're starting, but you don't know where you're going to finish. That is crazy. So God, if he's the architect of your future, then he's already finished it. So we need to hear him for his design. Abraham was also waiting for God who was the builder of his future. Building is construction. Construction should never happen except from a design. What builder builds except from the architect's plan? Or if you're American, the blueprint. Nobody does that. Because he's probably not going to build decent foundations and the taller the building, the quicker it's going to fall. Your future must have God as the architect and designer of it, just as Abraham did. So God does speak. And we must be able to hear him and respond. Can you do that? And the answer is an emphatic yes. Why? Because he put his spirit in you. And when he speaks to you, he speaks to his spirit and your spirit, which are in unity. What is the problem? Your mind. Faith exists in the spirit. Doubt exists in the mind. This is why we need to renew our minds. And this is why I was indicating to you that is the principle of empowerment. Your mind is the one that's going to be in the way. This is very, very important. So God speaks to you, and we must hear and step out and obey. God does not call you by your past, ever. Whatever you've done up to now is irrelevant. The good, the bad, and the ugly. It doesn't matter. When you got saved, you put it under the blood of Jesus, didn't you? Amen. But your past is gone. It doesn't matter what a school teacher said to you. It doesn't matter whether they said to you that you'll amount to nothing. Who are they with respect? They weren't there before you were in your mother's womb. In fact, that means mom and dad kind of were just part of the party. God was there first. There are no unplanned pregnancies. It doesn't matter how you arrived here. You can hear God. God speaks to your, to your future. He does not speak to your past. I want to say this to you. Your purpose for your life is exactly what you want to do. So many of us are so afraid to ask God to give us the revelation of what our future is because we're afraid he's going to ask us maybe to go live in rugs and have to deal with bugs. Yes, we are afraid that it's going to be something that we don't want to do. God is never going to call something out he didn't put in there. Please go to Psalms chapter 37. Please go to Psalms chapter 37 for me. I'm going to need to come down here so that I can read it up here. Psalm, Psalms chapter 37. Is it going to be up there? Verse 4, delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires and secret petitions of your heart. How many times have, you, have we read that? I'm here to announce to you that 
We might be praying for those secret petitions, and I hope you are. But let me tell you, he knows what they are before you pray for them. Why? Because he put them there. He's actually calling them out by your prayer. What an amazing promise of God. Can you think that heavy? You need to think that heavy. You're a believer. It actually isn't heavy. It's heavy for an unbeliever. God has a unique purpose for you. And in Psalms 37, he says, delight yourself in me and I'll give you the secret desires of your heart. How do you delight yourself in the Lord? Faith. By faith. By doing what he asks you to do. Now, you may have a lot of talents and you may have a lot of gifts and a lot of skills. I'm going to get to those. Those are not what point you to your purpose. The, voice, the first pointer to your purpose is the voice of God in your spirit. There are times in our prayer life where we need to be quiet. It's time for us to listen. We are very good at speaking prayer. We are very bad at listening to prayer. Because the Holy Spirit responds. Our prayer life should be, in effect, a conversation. So the first way that you're going to identify what God's specific purpose is for your life is by hearing His voice in your spirit. The second way is to discover what truly convicts you. What is it that gets your motor running? What is it that blows your hair back? Mine's fading. What is it that blows your hair back? What is it that you would do even if you didn't get paid? What is it that you would do if you didn't even get paid? What are you carrying that you have to release? In fact, I would say to you that when you find God's purpose for your life, you haven't found something to live for. You've actually found something to die for. Isn't that what Jesus did? Isn't that what Jesus did? Amen, church. We are to follow him and his example. What is it that you're carrying that is so value, so valuable that you cannot even think about living without releasing? Let's get into some specifics. It's a pers persistent thought. It won't leave you. You go to sleep with it, you wake up with it, you haven't told anybody, but it nags at you. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. It's your deepest desire. Your deepest desire. Sometimes it's hard to find what that is. It will connect me best with God. If I did this thing, my relationship with God just becomes so intimate and sweet because you're just in the right lane. You get up knowing that you're about to go and do the thing that you were born to do, even if nobody understands it. Listen, people, people will criticize you. They will always criticize what they don't understand. I must become myself for the benefit of others. Here's the thing. You know, I used to play rugby. I played it all the way through up to the end of high school. I even played it to university level. It wasn't a great rugby player, but I played it. I liked it. Nice hard knocks, loved it. And you only realize whether you love it when you get your first real hammering. Listen to me. There's a principle here. You see, when I was in the change room, the coach gave me a team talk. And I was motivated. I couldn't wait to get onto the field. But after the game, it was gone. The difference between motivation in your life and conviction is that motivation is short-term. Conviction will never leave you. What are you convicted about that will not go away? It will never leave you. Conviction is a deep thing. It is something that sits really in the chambers of your soul. You can't help yourself. You're convicted about this. Nobody has understood you because of this thing. This is who you are. The third way is to discover your potentials. Now, this can be very dangerous because 
in my life, I have many abilities, just like you. Now, you don't have all of them when you came out of mommy. They have to be developed. I mean, even Hossein Bolt had to learn to walk first, right? But there are, everybody knows who, who, who he is. You don't run a sub 10 that many times and not be known. But the point is, there was development required of these gifts, these abilities. There are things that you're able to do that the person sitting next to you will never be able to do. It's a very good indication of who you are and God's purpose for your life. But it is not ever the prime indication. I would regard it, maybe a good way to explain it would be to say, your abilities, your talents and your skills are in your toolkit for your life. Once God gives you a revelation of your purpose, they all suddenly start to make sense. I, in my life, I, I, I have two brothers. The one you heard playing this morning is a phenomenal musician. The other one is a phenomenal businessman. I'm able to hide in both camps. That confused me forever until I stepped into ministry. And all of a sudden, those abilities made sense. What is it that you have that you haven't been able to understand? And that's a little bit frustrating to you. You have not been able to understand it. And you understand you've got to release these things and you don't know how. What is it that you're sitting in? Here's the question. What is it that you are carrying? In 2011, we started the Bible school. And Pastor Andre asked me to do something with the third years. And I knew that I had, I would see them in 2013 because they'd had to go for the first year, second year, 2013, they would be in third year. I only started teaching them in 2013. But the day I stepped into that classroom, I suddenly realized God had given me an ability to teach. 2013, I'm trying to work out, I'm 62 now, so somebody help me how old I was. I think I was behind the curve. Don't get behind the curve. And I realized at that point, this is something that God has given me to do. There's an anointing for this, to be able to teach. How many years have waited for me? How many people have waited for me? Because I took that long. But on the other hand, the very positive side of that is that somebody took the trouble to kick me through the door. Somebody took the trouble to speak to me, to call me out. And then I heard God's voice. And because I obeyed and put myself out there, I stepped out of the crowd, I found satisfaction. I promise you, when I'm teaching, I find a satisfaction. You don't need to pay. In fact, they didn't pay me for that. They didn't change my salary. You don't do that for money because it gives you perfect satisfaction in your life. And the good news is that you can start doing that where you are right now. You don't have to change jobs now, but start delivering who you are. Start making an inventory of who you are. Start finding opportunities to deliver who you are because the world's waiting for you. Can I say this? If you do not deliver who you are, the world will ignore you and you will remain in the crowd. The fourth and last way to discover God's purpose and plan for your life is what characteristics are you carrying? What is it that you are carrying in terms of your characteristics? I'll give you an example. Somebody like Esther had beauty, but she had courage. Her character was developed to the point where she had courage. And because she had courage, she was able to embrace a plan God had for her at great personal risk and criticism. And as a result of that, the Jews were saved. Some people, you might be sitting here and you're just one of those people that you love giving gifts. 
as, from, as a little person, when you were growing up, you just lavished gifts, gifts on people. You can't help yourself. Just maybe you are the next kingdom financier. You might be a person who when you're in a group and there's a discussion, people naturally defer to you. Just maybe you're a teacher because people hear authority in you. Maybe you're a pastor. Maybe that you're going to be a teacher of the word. The last example I have is that maybe you're the kind of person who's just quiet but you're a very disciplined person. Well, then maybe you're not a teacher. Maybe you're not going to be a speaker. Maybe you're not going to be an entrepreneur. But maybe God has a place for you, for example, to be a pilot. There are no rules. There are only rules when you, when you intend to sit, to sit in a box. So if you're sitting here under the, vo- under the sound of my voice, I want to challenge you this morning as I bring this to a close. Who are you? Take a moment to close your eyes and ask yourself, who are you? Do you know in life we become so busy pleasing other people that we forget to invest in ourselves? Who are you? What is it that you are carrying? How do I identify, Lord, what your plan is for my life with those four examples, those four keys? I understand that I need to make sure that Jesus is at the center of everything that I do. And that the test for that is that when I have a success, what do I celebrate more, him or the success? I need to understand that I'm empowered to have a future, a significant future, a future of significance where the world will be different because I deliver who I am. And every one of us is qualified to do that. Jesus only qualifies who he calls. You don't have to be qualified to be called. But folks, we must understand that in order for any of that to happen, we must have a relationship with Jesus. It starts there because our spirit needs to be regenerated. I'm going to ask Pastor Nile to minister to you because of his experience. But today is a time. There's a call that's going to come. Today is a time for if you have not before, give your life to Jesus. So that what we have been discussing this morning can become a reality for you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. He is a gift to the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What a message on purpose. And I know that God has been speaking to you in your heart right now. And you are motivated and charged up to be ready for what God is going to do. Now, we're going to partake in communion as well in a few moments. But want to pray with each and every single one of you, Christian. What an incredible time. What an incredible message. This is such an important message for us, the believers, to know. Because truly, we cannot do anything if it is outside of the vine. Come on. Being connected to the Lord. Giving right. Him glory and understanding what our true purpose is. That's So really, I I believe that this message has touched you and changed you. And right now, we're actually bringing it to a climax, to the most important event in all of your life. That's right. Come on. And that's right. So if you need those four points, once again, it's how it's hear his voice, 
discover what uh, truly convicts you, discover your potential, and what characteristics do you carry. Now, you might be like, I hear what you're saying, and I see what you're talking about, but I don't have this relationship with the Lord. I've never been in that space. I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what my engagement is. I don't know how to step in. I want to tell you right now, Jesus loves you, and he's called you, and he's set you apart for such a time as this. Now, if you need to make right with the Lord, whether it's your first time or a recommitment or an assurance of your salvation, pray this prayer with us quickly. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me and cleanse me. Wash me and cleanse me. Set me free. Set me free. Father, Father, I thank you. I thank you for the finished work of the cross. For the finished work of the where cross. Where Jesus died. Jesus died. Was buried. Was buried. But on the third day. But on the third day. He rose again. He rose again. Because of that. Because of that, I'm saved. I'm saved, and I'm born again. And I'm born again because I have Jesus in my because life. Because I have Jesus in my life. Amen. Amen. And in and amen. Now you prayed that prayer. There's details coming on the screen. What now? Dot VIP. And now Christian's going to lead us in a time of communion. You know, this is the absolute most beautiful thing that we can do as a saved born again Christian mm. and that is giving thanks to our Lord for the sacrifice that he made come on so go ahead and grab your elements right now we'll start with the bread Lord thank we you, thank Jesus. you right now for your body that was broken for us for the sacrifice you made so that we might call out Abba Father mm. we glorify and honor you and give thanks to the victory that you come have on. done for us in Jesus mighty name we thank you now for your sacrifice Amen. You may partake of both elements. Hallelujah. And the cup. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we always remember, Jesus says, do this always in remembrance of me. This is what we do. You're part of this covenant family. It's even as Uncle Greg was talking about earlier. He spoke about the importance of covenant. Mm -hmm. That when we do this, we experience God because God is our source and our supplier. Consider the children of Israel throughout the throughout Egypt when they well not Egypt when they walked out of Egypt when they left Egypt in the prom, when they were going towards the promised land, yeah. God provided. They never lacked anything when they needed food. God provided, and that's what this is all about. This is about saying that there's a finished work of the cross, and God will always provide. It's a covenant meal for us to step into. And just the same way as the Israelites then were instructed to build um, uh, like an altar of remembrance yeah. to the Lord by bringing those rocks together. This is our moment where we can bring it to the Lord and we say, we honor you, we are grateful and we are thankful for what you have done for us. That's right. So it's going to be an amazing time right here in the presence of the Lord. I want to encourage each and every single one of you as you're connecting with us, that Jesus is calling you. Jesus is saying that you are part of what he has called you in the fullness and the pleasure of what he has deemed. You know, I love how Colossians says that He it pleased him to be in Christ. That's what God says. It pleased him to be in Christ. It pleased him to do what he did. Don't forget to join us this coming week for all our live broadcasts, Faith Today, Revival Nights, NXT. It's going to be an incredible time in the presence of the Lord. We will see you next week Sunday. On behalf of Dr. Andre and Pastor Jenny Raven, God bless you. See you next time.